Hello, this is Tommy. Welcome back to Chatomics. So in today's video, I'm going to show you if you master these six types of plots, you, you can make 90% of the figures in any genomics paper. And I'm going to actually prove you uh, with a real genomics paper. So make sure uh, you stick to the end. Okay, the first type of uh, plot that you want to learn how to make is called a bar plot. Okay, it's very actually common in uh, all the genomics papers. So it's used to show quantities or amount. So for example, y-axis here is the, uh, the number and then the x-axis here, you can have multiple groups here. So in this case, you can have, for example, three different genotypes and then maybe uh, three different conditions, so you can put them uh, side by side to compare. Of course, you can also flip them uh, and then make uh, the uh, the number uh, the quantities in the x axis. So the other is called st stack the bar plots. So the same thing here. So uh, different color here means they are from uh, different conditions. For example. So in single cell uh, RNA sequencing paper, you will see those type of uh, plots showing the composition of different cell types in a certain sample, for example. And you can also um, uh, kind of flip this the 90, 90 uh, degree. Okay, the next type of plot is called scatter plot. So scatter plot is used to investigate the relationships of two variables, X and Y. For example, in here, uh, for example, you can have two genes, uh, gene X and gene Y, and here each dot could be one sample, and then you can kind of uh, investigate whether uh, gene X and Y are correlated or not uh, in a scatter plot. And bubble plot actually is just extension of the scatter plot, and the same thing, X and Y, uh, but then you can map uh, the third variable uh, into the size of the dots. And here, the slope graph here, essentially also, this is also like uh, dot plots here. So, uh, so you have, for example, you have two groups, X and Y, but they are, for example, they are paired, um, for example, pre-treatment or after treatment. And then you look at the variable, um, the amount of cha uh, changes before and after, for example, treatment. And the third one is called line, line plot or line graph. So you can use the line graph to show the trend, uh, for example, uh, different time points here. So time point uh, one, two, three, four, five, and the y-axis is uh, uh, the uh, different amount. So essentially you can look at the trend and what's the differences uh, between different time points here. Okay, and here it does smooth the line graph. Essentially you just add a smooth line for the scatter plot. The connected scatter plot is essentially those scatter plot, then you just make lines that connect, to, connect each of those dots. The next type of uh, plot is called histogram. Histogram is used to uh, visualize the distribution of a single variable. For example, here, um, so x axis is uh, essentially those are different beans, so you can uh, make uh, the bean a different size and you can count how many uh, values are fall into that bean, okay? And for example, if you can make the bean like infinitely small, then you get this density plot. Yeah. And this is very frequently used to check oh, the distribution of your variable. For example, you want to check oh, whether my uh, uh, variable is following a normal distribution, so we can apply some of the statistical tests because some of them assume, uh, for example, normal distribution. Next one uh, is called box plot or violin plot is one of my actually most frequently used plots. So it can be used to uh, compare distributions uh, of different variables here. For example, uh, box plot here. So you know the, this uh, is the median and then you have the 75 and 25% uh, quartile shown here. And so for example, like in genomics data, you can look at the, the uh, so um, B, so uh, X, Y, and so on X axis, you can have three different categories. For example, you have the um, primary cancer, metastasis cancer, and this is maybe adjacent normal control. And then you can look at, okay, a particular gene expression 
distributions across uh, the three different uh, 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 three different uh, can, uh, tissues tissue types. And the violin plot is very similar to box plot, but then uh, the width of the violin tells you the density of the uh, the points here. And the strip plot and cyanide plots, though each dot will be one sample here, essentially showing the raw data here. So m most of the time, actually, we overlay those points to those box plots or violin plots. So not only you see the distribution, but you also see the uh, the raw data points here. Okay, so all of those like five different um, plots that I've shown you can be easily uh, made using ggplot2. So I have a link here for the cheat sheet so you can take a look. So make, uh, by the way, the uh, slides will be, the link of the slide will be in the description of this video. So make sure you uh, take a look and download it. And the last type of uh, plot is called <laughs> heat map. I think uh, maybe I need to take back my words. So maybe heat map is the, one of the most frequently used uh, figures in genomics paper. And the second most uh, frequently used is the box plot, maybe. And heat map is uh, as, there's no mystery. So essentially, heat map is uh, essentially using the colors to uh, represent the values. For example, in this example, so you have a uh, red uh, mapping to high values, uh, like white mapping to like medium values, zero here, and then uh, blue mapping to really small values here. Okay, so, and uh, I highly recommend you learn how to use complex heat, heat map. It's a bioconductor package, and it's very powerful and versatile. Not only you can make the uh, main heat map body like this, but you can, um, you can also add annotation bars here, then you can add those bar plots uh, as annotations. So this is uh, very, very actually powerful. Okay, so I have uh, showed you this uh, six different plots and let's just take a look at the real genomics paper and see what kind of plots do they have. So I just just went and Google like um, single cell RNA sequencing uh, in nature communications. Okay, so this paper, uh, single cell RNA sequencing demonstrates the molecule and cellular right reprogram reprogramming of metastatic lung adenocarcinoma. Okay, let's look at their figures. Okay. Okay, uh, figure one here. Uh, no, yeah, we can't make figures like this. <laughs> but let's see this figure B and C. Those are the so-called Kisney plot, and uh, so essentially each dot here is one cell, and then you have the x and y uh, axis. So this is just a scatter plot, right? So if you go back to here, this is scatter plot like this. And then if you go to here, the next figure, this is uh, so-called dot plots. So the color of the dots actually. Uh, is showing the expression uh, values of the different genes and the size actually uh, shows the uh, percentage of uh, cells that express that gene. So this is just a, actually an extension of a heat map. So instead of uh, using uh, grid like here, so you're using circles, right? And then you just map, okay. And you map the uh, size of the dots to the uh, percentage of cells that express that gene. So uh, actually in uh, one of my uh, blog posts, I showed you how to use complex heat map to make this uh, dot plots okay, from scratch. Okay, let's look at next plots. Okay, this one, okay. This is essentially just a scale plot. So because each dot here is one cell and you have X axis and Y axis. So this is the stacked bar plot we just talked about. This is the the uh, the slope uh, the slope graph here we we also talked about. And heat map, heat map, violin plots, box plots, line plots. 
what else here? Okay, scatter plot again, uh, stack the bar plot, stack the bar plot, heat map, scatter plot, and this uh, stack the bar plots and heat map. Now we can't make uh, this figure yet, right? Okay, and box plot. So this is essentially just the, uh, I believe those are uh, full cytometry data, but essentially it starts just one cell here and then this just showing the density of those cells. So essentially we can also create those here with, with ggplot2 as well. So what else here? So figure four, so again, scatter plots, heat map, stack the uh, back bar plots, box plots, box plots, okay. What else? So it's very similar. Like uh, maybe this one we we uh, we can't make this uh, called spider plot, but uh, I, we haven't actually covered it in my slides. But you can still oh you can also you make this in ggplot too. But the rest of the figures they're all very common types that I covered. Okay, then now it's just essentially uh, heat map, heat map, scatter plot box plot and box plot. And the last thing I believe is just pure actually uh, heat, uh, heat map. And again, uh, make sure you, you learn how to use complex heat map and you can actually make any heat map you want. Okay, I think this is the last figure of this paper. And as I, as I showed you, you can make at least 90% of the figures like in this paper. Of course, making the figure is not that hard, but uh, prepare the figures uh, into a format that you want plot and and, and also uh, have a clear mind um, what kind of questions you want to answer by using a certain figure that actually, that's actually more difficult okay i think uh, that's it for today i hope you like uh, this content and make sure you subscribe to it and i will see you next time